had an afternoon uh and i'm just like delight afternoon delight no i just had an afternoon off and <laughs> this weekend and I'm, i just wanted something stupid to watch yep that i didn't have to think about i just wanted something to play in the background really sure and i had seen the ad on netflix which in the time now i guess it's the number one thing on netflix it is um for the new this new will ferrell movie um called eurovision, eurovision song contest no eurovision uh the f- uh, something fire saga oh yeah i think it's called eurovision song contest the story of fire saga yes so that's their band name yeah uh rachel mcadams and will ferrell so i saw this and i'm like okay this looks terrible i'm just gonna yep. turn it on I'm, I'm a fan of will ferrell movies um some some Will Ferrell movies and other ones I'm just like meh. Yep. And and this one just looked pretty meh to me. Yeah. It looked I, like I, a ridiculous looked like an SNL skit. Yeah, we we talked about it at your house and I had said the same thing. I saw the trailer for it that Netflix plays like it, it, if you are on the movie it just automatically starts playing a trailer and I was like this looks pretty ridiculous yeah. like something that I really I, don't know if I wanted to watch. I don't think I ever would have watched it. And if I didn't wasn't in that situation where I just was looking for something dumb. I wouldn't have watched it had I not heard you talk about it. So I flip on this movie and I, I'm watching it. And shortly into this movie, I'm talking shortly in, I find myself getting immensely sucked into this movie. Yes. And as it goes on, I find myself becoming very invested in these characters and this movie. And so that's what I wanted to bring up. Boy, howdy. I'm going to tell you. This movie is fantastic. So the story itself is pretty shallow. And we're going to do spoilers here because uh, me and Jerry have both watched it. Spoilers. If you haven't seen Eurovision Song Contest on Netflix, uh, The Story of Fire Saga, I highly recommend that you watch it. I do as well. But but also understand it is a slapstick comedy. In part. In part. But there are parts of this movie that are... Rid, kind of ridiculous, right? There, it is. It is a weird. There's that, part. This is my only problem with the movie is they did a weird thing where they couldn't decide whether they wanted to make a serious romantic comedy or a slapstick comedy. Correct. So they kind of they melded the melded two. them together in a way that doesn't necessarily work perfectly. I agree. But it's it's easy enough to overlook. But and there there are parts of it that aggravated me. Yeah, for sure. To where I was like, come on, like just you didn't need to do that part of it. But that doesn't take away from the overall aspect of this movie to where I, the character development, like, and the way they make you fall in love with these two people and in everybody around them, even. Everybody's likable in this movie. Everybody around these two characters you start to love. Even the so called villain wasn't even really a villain and you end up lo- end liking him at the end and you feel bad for him in a certain way. And then you because feel- he, so. Yes. Uh, again, spoilers. This is all spoiler ridden from this point on. If you if you want to go watch it and not have it spoiled, stop listening because I'm going to spoil the shit out of it right now. Yeah. So this villain guy that it looks like he's trying to intercept the, the couple, which he does do in a way. He's only like he's struggling so much with his inner self and yeah. like <clears throat> being a Russian. <clears throat> He's he's from Russia, and there are no gay people in Russia, right? It's like, a pretty funny scene. Actually. You can't you can't be gay in Russia, um, but he clearly is. Yeah, like he's clearly gay, and he's struggling with that, and he can't be open about it. So he tries to find other outlets for that, for that, and I, I don't know. Like he's a relatively likable guy at the end of the movie. Like I, yeah. And you fall in love with the Greek, uh, the Greek singer. Yes. She, um, what was her name? I can't remember, but well, let's go back to the beginning. The point of this movie, it's a, it's a, it's a small town in Iceland. And, and before that Eurovision is an actual contest yeah. in Europe. This is based on a all real countries. contest and also was made with the cooperation of Eurovision. Yes. So they wanted this movie made. Um, and, and I, and if you read the comment or read the reviews, um, on IMDB, especially cause I, I, I follow IMDB. I like a lot of those reviews because people are like, I think it's better than rotten tomatoes. I agree. 
So if you go on IMDb and look at the comments, there are people from all different countries commenting on this that are saying like, what a great representation of Eurovision. What, like we've been waiting for a show, a, a movie about this. We've been waiting for something to represent this show. Yeah. And they, and they all say this did it. Yeah. Which blows my mind. And it, the show is it's, it's camp on purpose. Right? Sure. Eurovision yeah. is like campy bands from different countries. It's a fun, it's just a fun, ridiculous thing the that cool, they do in Europe. And the cool part about this is that each country takes, uh, a band or a contestant and they have their own little competition and they select one winner for their country and put them in Eurovision. So each country is representing these people. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the most talented artist from that country. No, you know, it's, it's the people that they've elected basically. Yeah. And to some be of it's it. just because they're outrageous. Yes. Some of it's because they're funny. Some of it's because they're talented, you know, whatever, you know, I'm sure the Rolling Stones weren't in Eurovision for, you know what I mean? Correct. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't, it's not like that. It's, it's all camp. It's like fun. Yeah. It's, it's for entertainment. Yeah. It's so completely entertainment. This has Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams, which I thought it was odd that she was in this movie in the first place, but it isn't really because she was in like Pitch Perfect, right? No. Wasn't she in Pitch Perfect? Nope. Well, anyway, she's a phenomenal singer. If she was in The Notebook. Really singing. <laughs> um, you're right. She wasn't in that. Anyway, Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams, they're Icelandic. They're from this small town, and their dream is to be musicians in Eurovision. And so it just basically goes from them being complete obscurity and then like randomly winning, winning, winning the Icelandic um, thing through a horrible mishap. Yes, a horrible explosion of a boat. <laughs> that killed all the performers. <laughs> And then they get into Eurovision, and then they're supposed to fail miserably. And it's just like their rise from losers, essentially. And being completely laughed at the entire time. And being told from point, like from, from the starting point all the way to the end, they're basically told, you guys are terrible. You're not going to win. Yeah. And they just continue on, you know, because they are so passionate about what they're doing. Yeah. And... The first song that they sing right in the beginning, that Volcanic Man. It's I great. <laughs> love that song. All the music. I mean, that's what makes this movie, right? It's the music. And the, I yeah. love a musical. Like, yeah, yeah, first ding off, dong. I'm a huge fan of musicals. And they nail it with this one. Like, all the music is fun and interesting. And I, I enjoy all of it. A lot of it's really funny. Um, there's a lot of really good humor in this movie. Way more than I thought there would be. I thought it'd be a lot dumber than it was. Yep. And it ends up being pretty funny. Like I laughed out loud significantly several times during this movie. I did as well. And But really what wins it is the heart and the emotion and the music. Here's here's what makes this movie different in, in my opinion. Is that it doesn't center itself around Will Ferrell's character really. I mean Will Ferrell's char character takes center stage because he wants to be the winner of Eurovision. That's all of his dream. But Rachel McAdams character is the one that it's really centered around. And she has a really big struggle because all of her opinions have never been listened to. She doesn't really get a voice in that group per se. Yeah. Um, but it centers around her struggle between being in that group during doing your own thing and just like her well, and being incredible in love with him love for Will Ferrell's character like and she is completely in love with him and he's pushed her away the entire time yeah, he's only because of your self-centered and selfish yes and that's what ultimately the struggle of the movie is is him dealing with his um selfishness and her dealing with her non uh, ability to go out and push her agenda right so that's what i love about it is that it does you do see you see her character go through all of these different things like trying to put her opinion out there and say like well i think we should do this but all of it is pushed down from will ferrell's character and i i don't mean that in a bad way it, it doesn't make him look like a bad guy yeah he's still likable he's still very likable and and the whole movie's likable but then you see it start to shift you know through through the whatever happens in the movie. Um, and then I, I'm going to just skip to the end because the whole ending part of this movie is what made it for me. Yeah. For like sure. that ending of the movie and the ending song and what they choose to do. 
I absolutely love. I, and I, that's where I was like, gosh, dang it. This is such a good movie. It's a tearjerker. At the yeah. end. It really is. And it just has everything that I enjoy to watch in a movie. Like it had a lot of buildup and a lot of excitement, had a lot of great music, it had um, a lot of heart, and it had a lot of comedy. And it ends the way it should. Yes. It ends the way, not necessarily the way you want it to in the beginning, but then when it comes to full circle to the end, you're like, yep, that was right. Like that they did this the right way. They start out small. They get somewhat big because of the show. And then they end small. What I didn't, and I like that. Yeah, I agree. And what I didn't see coming and didn't quite follow was the, the whole murder plot. <laughs> that came out of nowhere. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I must've missed that early on. It's because of the elves. Yeah. The elves. I thought that was funny. I actually thought that was a good touch. But I didn't catch what was going on there, and it, I feel like a little bit detracted. Didn't really, though, because it kind of goes off the comedic angle of the movie. It does. And there's there's this part where the elves murder a guy, and it's so funny because uh, they throw this little, little miniature knife in this guy's back, and the guy dies. And then Will Ferrell's like, he, he's like, thank you. I'm just gonna. I'm just going to set this here now. <laughs> He's like, I'm just going to put your knife down right here. You can have it back if you want for murder purposes. <laughs> it's so funny. He's funny in it. <laughs> He's very good, and his Will Ferrell's wife is Swedish. Oh, and really? they go to Sweden every single year in the summer. They spend the entire summer in Sweden. I found this out because I get in a rabbit hole of things and started looking into it. And yeah, they spend the whole year in Sweden. He spent a lot of time in, in Iceland and in that area of the world. Uh, so he's relatively familiar with it. And he told a story in an interview where when he goes to Sweden, like Swedish people are very kept to themselves and they don't, um, when they, when they meet or they see famous people, they don't interact with you. They're just like, okay, oh, well, you're there. All right. I'm going to, I see you and keep going. And he said that when you're in Sweden, he's like, I can pick out an American a mile away. He's like, cause they're so loud and apparent. He's like, I was on a boat going across this lake. He said, and I immediately saw these Americans and he's like, I heard them speaking over everyone else. And they're like, who's that? Is that Will? Yeah, that's Will Ferrell. He's like, and the dad of this group said, I'm going to go check it out. He's like, so he starts walking across the boat to him. He's like, and the way I get around this is that he's like, I know very minimal words in Swede, in Swedish. He's like, so I immediately look at my wife and just start talking random words. He's like, they make absolutely no sense. He's like, but she knows what I'm doing. He's like, and I just start speaking random Swedish words. He's like, and this guy came over and started walking circles around me. And he's like, as I'm just throwing out these Swedish words, he's like, the guy looks at me and then he looks over his family and does this. No, not him. Not, it's not him. And then he walks away. <laughs> he's like, it works every single time. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, I think it's a really good movie that everybody should watch. I really enjoyed it. I was really surprised. And maybe it's because I was expecting so little. So don't take this as it's some groundbreaking film. No, no, no. And, there are still parts of this movie that are, will be, to me, they were a little bit frustrating because I did want it to be, once I realized how good it was, I wanted those parts to go away. I agree. I felt like with a little tweaking, like this could have been a really big movie. Like and I almost felt like originally I'm like, oh, this was clearly a movie that they meant for theaters, but it never would have made any money. So they put it on Netflix. Right. But I don't think that's the case, by the way. I think it was a Netflix produced movie, but um, you do get that feeling that it's like a kind of like a B movie. Yeah, but it's it's fine. It it is fine. It's and fine. I what I wish they would have done. My only thing that I wish they would have done is take that volcanic man song that they did in the beginning, and they just they like overproduced it in the beginning. You know, as uh, them just practicing a song. Yeah, I wish they would have brought that back at the end. Oh yeah. To where they would have actually been able to fulfill that song and play it on stage. I like what they did at the end, but I wish at some point they could have worked that back into the song at the end is so great. 
It is. I don't want them to take that song away. I just wish they could have played that song on stage. Like at one of the stages in the competition. Yes. Yeah. I wish they could have replayed that because in the beginning they just, man, they nailed it with that song. I really love it. It's also a little unbelievable. Um, it's it's a little. Well, it's a lot. Unbelievable. No. <laughs> yes, for sure. But they make they like push the agenda too much that they're like terrible when right. they're clearly not. They really aren't. You know, she she sings better than the majority of the competition, I think. Right, and even he's not a bad singer, but he's also playing stuff, and he wrote the songs. Like in their town, I mean, like the people in that town are like, they, they they're pushing this whole narrative that they're terrible, and the whole time you're not like they're not terrible. Why does everybody keep saying that they're so terrible? Yes, like they're playing in the local bar. Everybody's having a great time. Everybody they sound loves great. them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, but you make want us to believe that everybody thinks they're like these horrible losers. It doesn't make any sense. It, so that's the one disconnect there. I, I love the little things like Pierce Brosnan yes. as his dad, uh, Graham Norton as the commentator. Yep. He does perfect. Yeah. I, I just, I, there was no unlikable. And again, it's just with, a good positive way to spend some time. I agree. It, especially like if you want somewhat mindless TV, yeah. you know, it, it is somewhat mindless. You don't have to think about it. It definitely doesn't produce any anxiety. No, that's why I liked <laughs> it. I think, I think I it's need. like a relief to watch this movie and it actually turn out to be something that is better than what you expected. Yeah. That we may have just ruined that for you, <laughs> yeah. but that was your fault for continuing on. Yeah. I'm just saying, don't be afraid of it because it looks like some dumb, you know, Will Ferrell comedy. Amy is still, like against watching it, she thinks it's going to be the dumbest. Marley thing in the hates world. Will Ferrell. Really? She hates Will Ferrell, um, so she won't watch any of his movies. That's why I started watching it without her. And then about halfway through, she walked in and she was just on her phone. She doesn't usually pay attention to anything that's on the TV. She's yeah. just on her phone. And then I noticed her like watching it. And I'm like, I got her. So I honestly want to watch this again, yeah. especially after talking about it. I would watch it again. I want to watch it again because I I enjoyed it that much to where it is. I think it's very rewatchable and I want to watch it with Amy and just get her take on it. I don't think she'll be as excited about it as I was, but I don't think she'll hate it at all. And that that's all I'm looking for. Uh, here's the only thing I could say is it was the middle of the day. We had some, well, you guys were coming over yeah, um, and some other kids for Cash's birthday. And I had like a window of time to watch this and I had to pause it with like 20 minutes left and come back here to get some stuff for, I don't remember. So I'm on my way back home and Marley says, and I'm almost home. Marley's like, can you run to your parents and grab something? I was like, I don't have enough time. Like I need to finish this movie before these people get to the house. <laughs> I told her that. I'm yeah. like, I have to finish watching this movie. Like I'm invested in it now. I've got 20 minutes left in this movie and I got 20 minutes till people show up at the house. Yeah. I can't take a five minute detour. Did you finish it right before I got there? Yeah. Like right before. Um, so that's how invested I got in this movie. And like, I just found myself at many times just looking at just smiling. Yes. And just laughing. I, I just. Isn't that great? That's what you great. want. It's been a long time. I feel like I felt like that after watching something. Everything is so heavy now. I know it is. And I don't know. I, I just really. It's a good it. break from all of the heaviness. And so you told me about it. And then I just I, even mean like entertainment. Entertainment oh, is it. heavy. Stories yeah. that we get now are very invested in invested heavy. in high stakes. Everything's high stakes. And this was high stakes for them. <laughs> yeah. But not for the watcher. Yeah. So I don't know. I highly recommend it. You, you sold me on it when you, when you told me about it at, at your house and I was like, man, I guess I have to really watch this now. Yeah. And I started it, uh, that night when I got home and I finished it the next morning. Uh, and I was just so pleased. Yeah. I was so pleased with what I saw. 